Hello. In this video, I would like to take you through setting up some of the most commonly used features on the Range Rover Velar, and also show you a few features that are a little less obvious, but no less useful for that. The first thing I would recommend is to download the Land Rover iGuide app. This contains not only a full searchable copy of the handbook, but also a reference guide for warning lights on the dashboard, a frequently asked questions section, and a visual tour around the inside and outside of the car with information on the controls, buttons, and features. It's a great source of immediate information when a question pops into your head, or you just see a button and wonder, well, what does that do? Another download is the Land Rover Remote app. Your car comes with a SIM pre-installed by the retailer who should have spoken to you about the setup of your account that enables many of the intelligent features on the car. When you first run the app, there's a quick start guide to aid setup, and then it provides control over remote locking and unlocking of the car, tells you how much fuel is in the tank, reports the last parked location of the car, so you can always find your way back to it. And it can export a full journey log in the form of an Excel spreadsheet, so it's easy to keep track of business mileage. It also provides remote activation of the climate system, cooling the interior in the summer before you get in, or warming and de-icing the car in winter whilst keeping the car fully secure. OK, let's start then with the smart key. Lock and unlock seem pretty obvious with the deployable door handles responding to each one. Pressing the lock button just once will lock the car. Pressing twice will double lock. This means the car cannot be unlocked from the inside, so even if someone smashes a window, they still can't open the doors. This simple step is crucial to keeping your vehicle secure. Always double lock either from the key fob or via tapping the door handle twice for vehicles with keyless entry. A beep can be heard to let you know this has been done successfully. Next, there's a button to unlock just the boot. If you have a powered tailgate, this will open or close the tailgate automatically, so do ensure there's space for it to safely operate. There are sensors that will stop it if obstructed, but you'll notice I use my arm rather than my head to demonstrate that. Powered tailgates can also be operated by the button above the number plate on the outside, a button by the driver's knee inside, and a button on the back of the tailgate itself. If you want to adjust the height the tailgate opens to, if for example you have a garage with a low ceiling, Reposition the tailgate to the desired height and hold the button on the tailgate until you hear a beep. This will store the height to that height in memory. If you have the hands-free gesture tailgate, so long as the smart key is in your pocket, simply sweeping your foot underneath the rear corner of the car will trigger the tailgate to open or close. Next, there's a handy button to trigger the lights. Useful if you're approaching the car in the dark or trying to identify your car in a busy car park. By default, they'll stay on for 30 seconds. This can be extended up to four minutes if you want using the instrument panel in the car. More on that later. Unlocking the car will also trigger the headlights and they'll remain on for a short period after locking to provide light to see you to your door. Now the final button is a panic alarm. Press for three seconds or press three times in three seconds and the horn will sound and the hazard lights will flash. After five seconds, this can be cancelled by holding the button down for three seconds. All our latest models have a Land Rover in control secure vehicle tracker fitted, and your retailer will have performed the first steps in the setup process. You should have received an in control email inviting you to activate the tracker. It's worth checking your junk folder if you haven't seen it. The activation process takes less than two minutes, and once complete and the product is activated, you can download the certificate from within the in control portal. If your insurer wishes to see proof of an activated tracker, simply go to the Your In Control Services section to find it. Holding the unlock button down will operate global opening, lowering all the windows to allow air into the car before you enter on a hot day. Similarly, if you get out and then realise you've left a window open, hold the lock button to activate global closing to raise all the windows and secure the car. These operations can be enabled or disabled using the instrument panel options. If your car is fitted with keyless entry, you don't even need to remove the key from your bag or pocket. So long as it's within around a foot or so of the car, when you press the button on the door handle, it will offer its handles out to you in a welcome. When you're leaving the vehicle, simply press twice to double lock the car, leaving it fully secured. For vehicles with Secure Tracker Pro, an ultra wideband frequency connection precisely determines the distance between the vehicle and the key fob to protect against thefts relaying the key fob signal. The owner will be alerted to any attempt to start the car when the key is more than three metres away from the vehicle. 
Getting into the car then, the first thing you need to do is find a comfortable position. Seat controls can be found on the outside of the seat. Steering wheel adjustment is either electric, using a joystick on the right hand side of the steering column, or manual. Simply turn the dial counterclockwise to free the steering wheel, adjust the reach and rake to suit, and then lock back in place by turning clockwise. Mirrors are adjusted using the controls mounted on the driver's door. Select which mirror to adjust using the buttons and then use the joystick to adjust the angles. Incidentally, if you have power folding mirrors, pressing both buttons together will fold them in. Useful if squeezing through a tight gap. Once everything is adjusted to your satisfaction, if you have the memory settings, you can save these positions. Just press the M button and then within five seconds, press one of the numbered memory settings. You'll hear a chime to confirm that it's saved. You can switch between stored settings just by pressing those numbered buttons. Great if you share the car with another driver. Controls for the electric windows are located on the driver's door and locking the operation of windows from the rear seats will also engage the child locks on the rear doors. Most people will want to leave their windscreen wipers set to auto. Move the stalk to its lowest position and then come up one notch. Sensitivity can be adjusted using the rotating collar. Pull forward for screen wash. The outer collar operates the rear wiper and then the button on the end controls the rear screen wash. Similarly, the headlights are best set to auto by rotating the outer collar. Pulling the stalk towards you will flash the main beam. When driving at night, pushing the stalk away from you will toggle the main beam on and off. If your car is fitted with auto high beam assist, the car will automatically dip main beam if it detects oncoming traffic. If you have matrix LED lights, the car will keep main beam on almost all the time, creating cones of shadow around other road users so they're not dazzled, but maintaining full beam everywhere else. This mode operates above 30 miles an hour and requires the lighting control to be set to auto. There's an array of controls on the steering wheel. On the right hand side are the controls for cruise control. Press set while traveling at your preferred speed and the car will automatically maintain that speed until you touch the brakes or press cancel. Pressing the accelerator will cause the car to speed up, but when you release, it will return back to the set speed. Pressing plus or minus by pushing the rocker up or down will increase or reduce the set speed. If cruise control has been canceled, pressing resume will return the car to the last set speed. If your car has adaptive cruise control, a radar monitors the speed of the car in front of you. If they're traveling slower, the car will automatically match their speed. The buttons on the left and right will increase and decrease the distance between you and the car in front. Whilst you need to be traveling over 20 miles an hour to activate cruise control, adaptive cruise will match the speed of the car in front all the way down to zero. If the traffic starts within three seconds, your car will pull away with the traffic. Any longer than that, and you'll need to give the car permission to go with just a gentle press on the accelerator. This function means that adaptive cruise control can be used in tiring stop-start traffic situations. HSE cars have steering assist. When using adaptive cruise control, the car will automatically deliver subtle steering corrections to remain centered in the lane, following the curve of the road. When you indicate to change lane, the car will automatically alter speed to assist merging into the traffic when you change lane. The limb button switches the function between cruise control and speed limiter. Lane keep assist can be toggled on and off with the button marked with converging white lines. If the heated steering wheel is fitted, the control will be found here. On the left hand side, the button marked with a small circle accesses the menu options for the instrument panel, including trip records and display layout and head up display if they're fitted. The arrows allow you to navigate through these menus, left and right to choose categories, up and down to select options within these categories. Uh, select options by pressing that centre button. The phone icon will answer an incoming call, end a current call or start the process to dial a contact on a connected phone. The voice button primes the system to listen for voice commands. Just wait for the chime and then tune radio to BBC Radio 2. Alternatively, you can use a wake-up phrase. You'll need to enable this via PIVIS settings. You may also want to disable confirmations if you're doing this. Initially, this is set to Hey Land Rover, but you can also set a name of your choice, e.g. Hey Sophie. Names with at least two to three syllables work best. The system uses natural language understanding, so commands could be Hey Land Rover, call David's mobile. Hey Land Rover, take me to Buckingham Palace. Or Hey Land Rover, increase cabin temperature to 22 degrees. To make the most of the advanced connectivity features offered by Velar, you'll need an in-control account. 
If you don't already have one, you can create one at www.landroverincontrol.com forward slash owner. To add the car to your account, it'll need to be parked close by in an area with good signal. When prompted, add the Velar to your account by pressing and holding the roadside assistance button located in the overhead console until the light flashes at a slower rate. This should take around 10 seconds. You have 60 minutes to complete this step. Then return to the website and follow instructions to complete the registration. Download the Land Rover remote app to your phone and sign in with your in-control account details. This will allow you to locate the vehicle, lock and unlock it remotely, and initiate remote climate to pre-warm the cabin, and on PHEV models, bring the battery to its most efficient operating temperature and report on the charging state of the battery. Starting the car is as simple as putting your foot on the brake pedal and pressing the start button. So long as the smart key is in the car somewhere, the engine will start. When you first switch the car on, the main touchscreen will greet you and at the bottom of the screen there's an option to set up your vehicle. We highly recommend you click on this as the system will walk you through a few key steps to streamline the setup process. This will lead you to select your choice of language. And from here you'll be prompted to add a name for your personal profile and you need to choose a graphic for that profile and then input your in-control account details. Each authorised user of the vehicle can have their own profile linked to their own in-control account. When you've done this, you may receive a message saying there is no internet connection and giving the option to enable connectivity. Select this and then switch on mobile data and agree to the terms and conditions. Once you've enabled mobile data, return to the sign-in screen by pressing the X at the bottom right of the screen. Tap the sign in button and when sign in has been completed, you'll be given the option to set a four digit passcode to secure your data. And then the option to remember this passcode to automatically sign you in whenever you start the vehicle. PIVI will then prompt you to pair a phone. On your phone, simply go to settings and then Bluetooth and search for new device. Select Range Rover Velar and then confirm pairing on both your phone screen and then the PIVI screen. There are options to enable both audio streaming and telephone communications. For display and reading of text messages, it may be necessary to select the Range Rover Velar Bluetooth device on your phone and then select Enable Notifications or Text Messages. You can then pair additional phones to the system or continue. There's always the function to add more phones later. PIVI allows two phones to be connected simultaneously, for example, work and personal phones. When either phone rings, you can answer the calls via the vehicle's touchscreen. For making calls, you can switch between focused phones directly from PIVI's home screen. Finally, PIVI will prompt you to select your favourite radio stations to add to your favourites list. Following a short animation showing a few tips on how to navigate PIVI, the main homepage will appear. The setup wizard will be offered on the greeting screen each time you start the vehicle. Multiple drivers and profiles can be added and PIVI will remember each driver's preferences to deliver a personal experience. It can also analyse behaviour to pre-select navigation routes and destinations based on your regular routine. PIVI's new home screen has been designed to allow direct access to the features and information you use most. Depending on your preferences, this allows around 80 to 90% of the tasks you use to be carried out directly from a single screen in two taps or less. By default, PIVI's new home screen offers direct access to media and telephone, and in S models upwards, navigation, and the most common features and information associated with each. PIVI offers a consistent logical interface. On the left hand side, there's the clock and connectivity details, and below that, shortcuts for the camera and settings. On the right hand side, you can switch between driver profiles, jump straight to navigation, phone or media from virtually anywhere in the system, or launch one of the additional apps available. Pressing the cog icon, will take you into settings, where you can find options for connectivity, languages, and many vehicle safety features. It's worth looking through these to understand the full range of customization available. Quick settings allows you to choose a dark or a light display theme and adjust screen brightness. The next tab is context sensitive, presenting options for the application you jumped here from. So if you press the settings icon whilst in navigation app, it'll say navigation. Coming from the home screen, it gives options for the home screen layout. Selecting all takes you into options for driver profiles, connectivity, which includes Bluetooth, mobile data, Wi-Fi connecting and settings for CarPlay and Android Auto, 
vehicle, which allows configuration of drive assistance features like lane keeping and parking aids, security features, exterior light settings, which includes headlamp delay and setting the lights for driving abroad, convenience, which controls the global opening and closing of the windows, and brake hold, which affects the assistance you receive when stopping on an incline. Units allows customization of display units, and my vehicle shows the next anticipated service date. Back to the home screen. The standard three tiles can be customized with other features and functions. These can be added to the home screen by swiping left and selecting the edit button. Then tap or drag the desired tiles from the bottom row up to the top and reorder to your preferences. Going back to the home screen, you can swipe through all the tiles. Many tiles show live information like the distribution of power to each of the wheels, the angle of incline or banking that you've achieved, or just the name of the radio station that you're listening to. PHEV models have a dedicated EV tile that shows both the electric range and the combined electric and petrol range. Let's look at the main three tiles. If no phone is connected, the phone tile will prompt you to pair a device. With a phone connected, the phone tile shows which of the connected phones is currently active for outgoing calls. Options below access recent calls or favourites data if your phone supports this, as well as the ability to switch between connected phones for outgoing calls. Lists can be scrolled and just tapping on a contact from the recent calls list dials the number, all without having to leave the home screen. Connecting a phone with a USB cable enables Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, both are standard on Range Rover Velar, although some Android phones may require the free Android Auto app to be installed. You may also need to switch the service on for your device by going to Settings, All, Connectivity, and then either CarPlay or Android Auto. This allows the control of compatible phone apps via the main screen. Most music playing and podcast apps are supported, as well as streaming services like BBC Sounds and Scala Radio. Connecting your phone in this way also allows voice access to your phone assistant using a long press on the steering wheel button. Send text message to Dad. I'll be there in about 20 minutes. The next tile to look at is media. The home screen shows what's playing along with buttons for source and favorite radio stations. Favorites can contain DAB, FM and AM based stations. There's also an icon to instantly mute or pause playback. You can even access your playlist or upcoming music list if supported by your phone's music player. Clicking on the media icon launches the media play screen providing access to the full station list. Tapping stars will add them into your favourites. The phone I've just added will also now show up as a source. Jumping in on the last audio played on the device. Browse will allow access to the full range of songs, artists and albums available on the phone. And again, many selections can be made using the voice control system. The last of the three main tiles to examine is navigation, standard on specifications from S level upwards. With no destination set, the home screen provides shortcuts to set home as your destination, search and direct access to your recent destinations. Just click on a destination from the list and the route will be calculated and guidance start in around a second. Pressing search takes you to the full screen navigation view where you can click on a search category. Selecting one of these will display nearby options and give access to ratings and reviews if available. Parking options will even show the hourly rate for the car park. Whichever way a destination is chosen, clicking on Go will calculate the route according to your preferences in navigation settings. If you prefer, you can click on Routes to choose between the fastest, shortest and the most economical route options. Instead of searching by category, you can input a search term wherever you see the search box in navigation. Now this can be a place name or a place type like Italian restaurant or an address or postcode. Destinations can also be easily set by voice. Take me to 33 Baker Street, London. 33 Baker Street, London. You can say I'm finished to set the location or changed followed by the address item you wish to edit. I'm finished. As well as appearing on the main touchscreen, navigation instructions will also be shown on the interactive driver display. This can be reconfigured by pressing the menu button on the steering wheel and then selecting display, and layout options to choose between a one or two dial display with info panels that can be configured to show the map or media information, or do away with the dials entirely for a clean, streamlined digital layout. You can even bring the map across the whole screen, retaining a digital readout of your speed. 
The full screen map view can now also display additional information such as traffic incidents en route or a list of upcoming manoeuvres. With the destination set, the home screen's navigation tile options change to cancel guidance, mute or unmute voice turn by turn instructions and access to en route information. Tapping on this displays a list of traffic incidents and the associated delay or rest stops available along your current route. PHEV models will show charging stations along the route as well. Simply click on a destination from the list for it to be added to your route as a waypoint. A PIVI Pro learns your regular journeys. On startup, the navigation tile will display up to three predicted destinations, each with an estimated time of arrival, taking into account your usual driving style and current traffic conditions. If you sometimes drive to the same destination using different routes, it will also identify which route is the fastest based on current traffic conditions. Tapping on the destination shown in the navigation home screen tile confirms this as the intended destination. For frequently used routes, the system displays the route but doesn't provide turn-by-turn -turn voice instructions. However, if you enable the smart voice guidance feature in navigation settings, the system will announce any issues on your commute and provide alternative route guidance. If this results in driving on unfamiliar roads, the system will automatically enable voice guidance. On returning to familiar roads, the system will automatically mute voice guidance so you can fully enjoy the Range Rover Velar's sound system. An additional navigation setting labelled Auto Start Commutes even allows the automatic initiation of your most regular journeys. This means you can start your morning commute and still get traffic updates without having to press any buttons except the ones you use to start the car. Range Rover Velar is equipped with a 4G data connection, providing over-the-air performance updates of the infotainment and other vehicle systems, and allows the addition of new features over time. When an update is available, it will alert the driver via the menu touchscreen and ask for permission to update when you complete your journey. Some updates may require the vehicle to be switched off and locked while the update is carried out. For convenience, these updates can be scheduled for a suitable time within a two-week period. The data connection also enables a variety of connected navigation features and services, such as real-time traffic information, live EV charging station availability, parking availability, safety camera locations, live search, as well as monthly navigation map updates. It also enables the online pack, which allows synchronization and streaming from various online accounts, including Spotify, Deezer and TuneIn, and Google and Microsoft calendars. You can also view weather at your destination, even pay for parking from the vehicle's touchscreen using Ringo. To set this up, go to the app launcher, select connect accounts, and then select the type of account that you wish to connect. You'll then be given the option of an emailed link or a QR code. Simply scan this with a phone that already has these accounts added and Pivi will do the rest. Once added, Spotify, Deezer and TuneIn will show up as additional media sources alongside your phone and radio bands. The Agenda app allows you to set the location of an appointment in your calendar as the destination on the nav with one tap, or call the meeting organiser with one tap if you're running late. There's no need for additional mobile data contracts or SIM cards. If there's a valid active subscription, mobile data is included via a built-in SIM card. The connected navigation subscription is included for three years. In Control Remote, which allows remote access to your vehicle via the remote app, includes a three-year subscription, whilst the online pack is included for an initial one year. On renewal of a subscription, the associated data plan required is also renewed. Back to the home screen. The camera icon reveals either the rear camera or, if fitted, 3D surround camera views that can simulate an overhead view as well as a full 360 degree surround view from outside of the vehicle. Each of the camera icons on the overhead view presents a different camera location from outside the car to give you perfect visibility all the way around the vehicle. Front and rear cameras can be selected in the ultra-wide view, so when pulling out of a blind junction or reversing out of a tight parking space, you have enhanced vision left and right. The lower touchscreen controls heated seat options, off-road controls, heated front and rear windscreens, and ventilation. Heated and cooled seats can be controlled by the large rotary dials also used for climate control by simply pressing the dial in to change function. Top spec cars also have massage seat options, controlled through the menu on the lower touchscreen. Pressing the vehicle menu soft key on the lower touchscreen will allow you to select different driving modes simply by pressing on the screen. This will alter throttle response and gear change settings to deliver the best control and grip on a variety of surfaces. 
If your Velara is fitted with air suspension, on the right of the lower touchscreen, you'll see icons to control the suspension height, either dropping down 40 millimeters to access height or raising up 46 millimeters to give maximum ground clearance on rough terrain. The rear suspension height can also be controlled using the switches in the load space, which can make loading the boot or hitching a trailer easier. You can even control the suspension height from the smart key. With the engine running and hazard lights activated, close the doors and press the headlights and tailgate unlock buttons simultaneously to lower the suspension, headlights and unlock to raise the suspension, and headlights and lock to set the vehicle to normal height. More details about the operation of air suspension can be found in iGUIDE. PHEV models have a My EV feature. A button in the area below the touchscreen cycles through the three different drive modes. Hybrid, which allows the car to automatically switch between petrol and electric power. Save, which locks the car to petrol only, conserving and recharging the battery power, useful if you want to reserve charge for driving through an urban area later in your journey. And lastly, EV mode, which switches the car to use purely electric power, although the engine will restart if the charge is too low or greater acceleration or speed is required. It will also revert to petrol power if the mud ruts, sand mode or wade sensing is activated, or the automatic transmission is set in sport mode. Setting the navigation for your journey will allow the PHEV to automatically plot when to use its electric power over the journey to achieve best efficiency and ensuring that EV mode can be used in urban areas. Velar uses a palm shift drive selector. Press the brake, squeeze the trigger on the front and then nudge it towards you for forward drive or away for reverse. Whilst driving forward, nudging the selector towards you again will put the Velar into sport mode. This will alter the operation of the automatic gearbox, holding onto the gears longer to give punchier performance. You can manually shift up and down the auto gearbox using the paddles either side of the steering wheel. In drive mode, the system will revert to auto operation after about 10 seconds, but in sport mode, you'll remain in manual control of the gears. To return the car to automatic operation, hold the right paddle towards you for about a second. The paddles can be configured so that they're only active in sport mode by going to settings, and then vehicle and convenience. When you come to a stop, press the P button to engage the parking brake. Switching off the ignition will automatically return it to park and the parking brake will release automatically when you drive away. When driving, be aware that a start-stop system is standard. So the engine will cut out when you come to a stop, instantly restarting in the time it takes for your foot to move from the brake to the accelerator when you pull away. This can be overridden with the control of the lower touchscreen in the vehicles tab but it delivers a surprisingly high fuel saving and helps reduce air pollution in cities and towns. All cars are fitted with exhaust filters. These need to refresh occasionally and you may notice more visible exhaust emissions whilst this is happening. For a diesel, it tends to happen when the car is being driven at higher speeds and the exhaust gets hot. For a petrol, it happens more frequently when you lift off the throttle and more oxygen passes through the system. Occasionally, the car may display a message saying drive to clear. This is most common on diesels, which have been used for predominantly short, low-speed journeys, in which case they need a blast down a dual carriageway. For petrols, it happens when they've been used under load, like towing. Find occasions to lift off the throttle and slow using engine braking to clear the filter. Automatic braking systems for city driving are standard and detect other traffic, pedestrians and cyclists, preventing collision or mitigating damage. Cars fitted with adaptive cruise control have a high-speed emergency braking system, the lane keep system will provide a torque steer back into the lane if the car thinks you're drifting beyond the lane markers, so it's important to indicate when changing lane. If blind spot assist is fitted, the door mirrors incorporate a blind spot warning system, lighting up when a vehicle is travelling alongside and flashing rapidly to warn if a car is closing to overtake. If you start to move into the path of an adjacent vehicle, the car will deliver a torque steer in an attempt to avoid a collision. These driver aids are designed to intervene when there is no input from the driver, which is surprisingly hard to simulate, so please don't try to test these systems. Any input from the driver will override them, and they do not reduce the driver's responsibility to drive safely and attentively. They can be deactivated, but as all of them have been shown to save lives both inside and outside the vehicle, they're switched on by default, and we recommend leaving them that way. For additional safety, in the event of an accident where the airbags are deployed or the fuel safety cutoff is activated, the car will automatically contact emergency services, sending GPS location data. Emergency services can be contacted at any time by pressing the right-hand button above the rear-view mirror. 
the left hand button summons breakdown assistance. Both these buttons have covers to avoid accidental operation. When refuelling, simply press the filler flap. So long as the car is unlocked, it will open. When fueling PHEV models, switch off the engine and press the button marked with a petrol pump icon near the driver's knee. This will equalise the pressure in the fuel tank and unlock the filler flap. A smart mechanism will prevent filling with the wrong fuel, but as an additional reminder, diesel cars will have a spout for topping up with diesel exhaust fluid. Warnings will flash up on the information display to let you know when you're running out of diesel exhaust fluid. You get about a thousand miles notice and if it runs out as a legal requirement, the engine will not start. PHEV models have a separate cover on the other side of the car, which reveals a Type 2 charging socket. Plug the cable into the power first and then connect the car. An LED next to the socket will confirm that the car is charging by turning green. Charging status can be monitored on the remote app. The engine will not start with the power cable connected, so no need to worry about driving away while still tethered. The cable will also lock in place. To unplug it, simply unlock the car. If charging with DC power, it may be necessary to fully unlock the car and then press unlock once more on the smart key to disengage the cable lock. This video has really only touched on the essentials. Please make use of the videos on our YouTube channel, the iGuide app, or the online owner's handbook to find out more, or contact your retailer with any questions. Thank you for your time and enjoy your time with the Range Rover Velar.